Curl is a really useful tool for transferring data to and from a server. And there have been some services built online either with curl support in mind or built entirely around use with curl. And today we're going to be looking at some of the more useful ones. Now I am going to be covering some of the popular ones like WTTR.in, but hopefully you find out something new from this video as well. So let's just look at my main screen. Now the first one we're going to be looking at is cheat.sh. Now you might already know about the shell script cheat.sh. This is basically the same thing but hosted on a website. So if you don't want to download it yourself, you can run it from here. Now cheat.sh, it's similar to a man page, but it's more focused on actually how to use the application rather than here are the options that are available. So normally a man page, it will show you what options are there, but it doesn't really show you use cases for it. And it doesn't really show you what you can do with them. So let's say we want to look at the one for, I don't know, Curl, for example. Now I know this one actually is useful. So fetch only the HTTP headers from a response or fetch your external IP and network info as JSON and a bunch of other useful stuff in here as well. Let's see if we can find another useful one. Let's say we want to look at the cheat.sh for a man page, for example. So this one has things like man a command and it'll tell you what it actually does. It has how to look at commands from a certain section how to see the path for a search man page, and things like this. Let's see if we can find another useful one. Like, let's say, I don't know, does NVim have one? I know regular Vim does. Yep, we have a couple of things for NVim. So, how to actually exit insert mode, how to undo an operation, how to actually quit the application. Things like this that don't really make sense to add to a man page, but are still potentially useful for people who might be new to an application. Now I did mention WTTR.in, so let's go to that one now. So this one, if you don't know, is a basically a weather service. Now I'm actually using this in my status bar to get this weather up here, but let's just run it like this. So I'll zoom out a bit actually, so we can actually see a little bit more. Okay, so right now it seems to be showing the weather for the Sunshine Coast, which is a little bit far away from where I am. That would be in Queensland. I don't know why it thinks I'm there. I don't know, some, something's going on there and it thinks I'm in the wrong location. But we can actually set the location it is looking at. So let's just pass in Adelaide and that's a little bit closer to where I actually am. So the weather here, sunny, 16 degrees. Yeah, that's, that's roughly correct. Now, I'm not sure where it's actually pulling its weather information from. So it might not be the most accurate all of the time. Just keep that in mind. And also, a lot of the time they will run out of weather requests. So... Sometimes it might just not work. That's kind of the problem with using a free tool like this. There's only so many resources they can actually pay for. But generally, I would say it is really, really useful. Now, if you want to do some extra stuff, if you just write in colon help, it will show you a help page for basically everything you can do. Now, I did a video on this a long time ago, and I went through a lot of this stuff. I don't think the video was very good, but if you want to go check that out, I might leave a link down below if I remember to do that. Now let's check out the next one. So the next one we have is actually kind of cool. So I found out about this one really recently. So this is called qrenco.de. Now what this is, is a QR code generator. So let's just pass in something like www.youtube.com. So if we run that, it will actually create a QR code. So let me just bring up my phone and see what's going to happen when we try to read this. As you can see here, I don't know if you can read it or not www. It's not focusing on it. Right, because I've got my focus set to absolute focus. It says www.youtube.com. So it is loading in the information properly. Now, it is a very limited QR code generator, so don't try to do anything too complicated with it. I know it works perfectly fine for loading in a bit of text like this, but it is still a very small QR code. So trying to do too much information will basically get your data cut off or it might try to throw an error. What about our next one? So the next one also, I would say, is pretty useful. Now, this is a dictionary. So you can get this dictionary just working on your system. And if you're using a dictionary a ton of the time, it's probably a better idea to do that. But if just on the off chance you need some sort of dictionary and you don't feel like installing one in your system, this will work well enough. Now, you might also notice that I'm using a different protocol here. So I'm not using HTTP anymore. I'm using the dict protocol. So curl will actually work with protocols besides HTTP and HTTPS. So I think you can use it with Gopher as well and a couple of other ones. This one though is the dict protocol. So let's say we want to look up something like Linux and obviously spell it correctly. And as we can see, Linux, an open source version of the Unix operating system. 
Okay, let's have a look at another one. Let's see if we can find a definition for, I don't know, uh, computer. Yeah, I was trying to think of something more interesting, but that's the first one that came to mind. So, a device depending on the principles of electronics and using the manipulation of electron flow for its operation. That is, that is a really interesting explanation for computer. Sure, I guess that works. If you need a dictionary and you don't want to bother installing one in your system, this is probably the easiest way to go about doing it. Obviously, you could do it from your actual web browser, but if you like being in your terminal a lot of the time, or say you're writing a document in Vim, there's not really any need to go and open up a web browser just to use a dictionary. Obviously, you could also like buy a physical dictionary, but who wants to do that anymore? Just do it from your terminal. Might as well. The next one I think is actually pretty cool. So this is rate.sx. I've also done a video on this one. This one is a basically a cryptocurrency chart. So it'll show you things like the prices for all of the big coins, how much they've changed and things like that, their market cap, their spark. Or you can look at a specific coin. So let's say you want to look at the value for something like LBC. So we run this and it'll show you a chart of how that's changed. Or we can say look at a chart for, I don't know, Bitcoin. Or we can say, let's look at a chart for Bitcoin over the past 10 days, for example. So the chart we saw here is just Bitcoin over the past day. But we don't have to look over a day. We can say, look over a week and three days, which is obviously 10 days. Or we can look at a longer period. Like, let's say we want to look at the last month or so. As you can see, showing the last month of data. And the other thing you can do with this that I think is cool is if you put a one here before the actual coin you're looking at, it will just print out the value. Now, I'm actually using this on my system right now. So I've got a notification that will basically print out the prices of the coins that I care about. Now, it's supposed to be getting updated periodically, but the update script isn't working right now. So it says it was last updated yesterday. I will deal with that at some point. That's more of a problem with cron than a problem with rate.sx. Now, the next one I think is also really cool. So this is a URL shortener. So if we run curl with the dash F option, the dash F option, if we look at the man page, is for basically filling out a form. So if we just go down to dash F, next, next, here we go. So that is the dash dash form option or dash capital F. Now, this will basically let you send data along with the URL you're actually trying to query. So basically, it'll let you do things like, say, you want to send the value shorten with the link that you want to send to it. And that's what we're actually going to be doing right now. So if we do curl dash F, and then we do shorten equals www.youtube.com. Why can I not spell that? And we're going to send it to HTTPS colon slash slash 0x0 dot st. So what this is basically going to do is send the key value pair shorten and www.youtube.com to this link right here. And if we send that there, give it a second to go and it's segmented fault. Okay, let's try a different URL. <laughs> let's try with Google. And it's segmented fault again. Okay, well I can't show you that one then. <laughs> I'll see if I can fix that off camera. It turns out you also needed to pass in the protocol it's using. So if we just pass in HTTPS alongside the actual URL there, just run that, give it a second to load that. Now we've got this link here. So this is a shortened down link that will take us directly to Google. And as we can see, it is working just fine, google.com. So you can do that with any URL you want. Now this service does have some limitations on the sort of stuff you should be using it for. So don't use it for things like porn or malware or other stuff that the developer isn't really a fan of. So just keep in mind that there are some limitations of what you're allowed to use it for. So yeah, just don't ignore the developer because it is a cool tool and it is nice that something like this is available directly from your terminal without having to go and actually download anything. The next one also is pretty cool. Now, this is a news service. So this is called Get News. So getnews.tech. And this will just bring back a list of news when it eventually loads. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. A lot of it might be in other languages and you can actually pass in a query. So let's say you're interested in something like Linux, for example. So there's things like Hacker News on here. And actually, that's the only thing on here. Okay, let's do something a bit more general like technology. And we've got things like US moves to cut off chip supplies to Huawei. We've got technology progress equals iterations times progress between iterations, things like this. Or you can look at another one, like, I don't know, let's say you want to look at something for Tesla. Do we have anything for Tesla? Yep, you've got some stuff about Tesla that's going on. 
So you can pass in pretty much anything you want to this and you'll see if there's some sort of news that's going to come back for it. I don't know how filtered this is, so if you're worried about the types of stories that you're getting back, I don't know what they're filtering out and what they're leaving in. So maybe that is a bit of a problem for you, but if you just want some general sort of news, this might be good enough for you. Now we've got two more left, and the first of the two we're going to be using a new option. So this is the dash capital L option. Now dash capital L, basically if the server reports that the page has been moved to a different location, it'll try to follow where the page has now moved to. So if we just run curl dash capital L with this link right here, so this is a bit.ly link, and if we run this, this is the business card of Brian Jenks. I thought, hey, if I'm doing a video on Curl, I might as well mention this. This is actually really cool. I know that he didn't come up with this himself. He kind of took it from someone else. But it's still a really cool idea to have a curlable business card. Now, there's one more left, and let's just run that one. So this is curlparrot.live. Run this, and you get a dancing parrot. So I think that's where we're going to end this video on Curl. Hopefully you found something new from this video. Obviously, this one here, not the most useful tool, but maybe something like rate.sx or the dictionary, or maybe even wttr.in was even useful for you. Hopefully you found something useful for this video, and yeah, I think curl is really cool. Maybe I'll do the curlable business card myself. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see what I decide to do. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. A special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, P.D. Road, Tony, Donald, Will, Kulari, and Zilvi. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or just anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, remember to go check out my podcast, Tech OT, that is available on Library and YouTube for the video version, and wherever you listen to podcasts for the audio version. Also, remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.